This is Dr. Benzinger on Health with SecondOpinion.org. Today, we want to welcome you to our vignette on high blood pressure. If you've not joined us at SecondOpinion.org, please do. You'll find if you sign up for our free newsletter, you'll know everything that's going to be coming out week after week after week. And all of these things are here to help you and encourage you. If you need product line support, Physicians Premium is there to also help you. High blood pressure. So many people are affected. In fact, the question I always have for somebody if you're dealing with this disease or you're predisposed to the, this disease because of your family, will you choose to control your future or will you be controlled by the disease that we talk about today? High blood pressure. The CDC high blood pressure report noted the following that healthcare professionals were given a C minus grade by the United States. In fact, what we found out was that we got a D plus in understanding high blood pressure by our patients. In other words, how well we explained it. A D plus in quality of communication and understanding between the doctor and their patient of what it is and what do I do about it. A C minus, by the way, you're not getting into Harvard with these grades, are we? A C minus for the patient compliant with the treatment pro program, a C minus for patient satisfaction with the treatment progress, and C plus satisfaction with current medications received. Now, here's the thing I would like to ask. Maybe a lot of the dissatisfaction is we talk down to people. We don't just educate people. We don't have enough time to educate people half the time. And lastly, we don't really push a person's responsibility for their own condition so that they can have a chance to help themselves remove their problems with high blood pressure, which statistically is 80% plus. You know what would happen to the market if 80% of all high blood pressure medications did what they're supposed to do and eliminated high blood pressure? Be a lot of drug companies hurting, but a lot of people living a lot longer, having a better quality of life. Which, which is the thing we're here for? You, okay? What do you do to reduce high blood pressure? Defined, defined a correct blood pressure, make sure you got it first. Don't get it the first time because you might be nervous the first time, have a full bladder and not even notice it. Your high blood, pr your blood pressure's up and they give you a script. You might want to have that checked several times. Look for the cause, reduce your salt. DASH diet is something we're gonna recommend. Quit smoking, limit alcohol, and control your diabetic state, okay? What we know is reducing high blood pressure can be accomplished by having adequate potassium, calcium, and magnesium that you start an exercise program that you maintain, that you have mind-body relaxation techniques on a daily basis, avoid medications that increase high blood pressure, sinus, asthma, things like that medications, or a cold medications. I've had people have cold, beyond antihistamines, their blood pressure's high, the doc puts them on a script for high blood pressure medication because the patient never either had the time or thought about telling them they were on a cold medication. Eliminate all stimulants, caffeine, etc., and reduce saturated fats and cholesterol. What we understand about uh, high blood pressure is 50 million people have it. One out of four have high blood pressure. How many organs are affected? It goes on and on and on. Every organ, every body part is affected by high blood pressure long term. And tobacco, caffeine, excess alcohol, and toxic chemicals make it worse. And drugs should not be used to substitute for lifestyle changes, period. You're not willing to help yourself, the medication is not gonna do it for you and its, it's long-term effect continues to get worse if in fact we don't support it with lifestyle, change, lifestyle changes. So when we understand our high blood pressure, we wanna make sure that we have the cuff size that's right. Wrong cuff size could give you a misreading. If you're a larger person, you're using a small cuff, Okay, get a correct reading. The white coat syndrome, seeing this white coat could be the reason you have high blood pressure. And if that's the reason, guess what? You probably should correct that by getting another reading. Retest several times before starting treatment unless it's life-threateningly high and stress can and does affect your blood pressure. Keep it in mind. Abnormal blood pressure readings can occur by drops in sleep. Just get up or do it before, right before you're gonna get, go to sleep and you're very sleepy can change your blood pressure readings. Increases quickly when you wake and breathing affects blood pressure. Hold your breath while you're getting the test, it drives it up. <clears throat> Mental and physical activity. You're overthinking things, your stress levels up, so does the tension in your arterial walls. Sleep deprivation, not enough sleep, more high blood pressure. Steroids, birth control, 
and anti-inflammatories. You could be on birth control taking a bunch of anti-inflammatories for stiff neck. Get your blood pressure checked, seems to be high. Check it in a week, it seems to be high. Same stuff's happening because the neck's not better. Guess what? Okay? Nighttime, it, uh, nighttime, your blood pressure will fall less if you're a diabetic. Just keep that in mind in case it doesn't fall much. Smoke raises it. A full bladder, you're sitting there with a full bladder, will raise it. And if you're over two ounces of alcohol a day, it makes it, makes it worse. Under two ounces of alcohol a day makes it better. Okay? Just real quickly on strokes, <clears throat> okay, high blood pressure increases strokes, speeds up arterial sclerosis, promotes the thickening of the wall because it's hitting against it so much harder, damages small arteries, causing them to collapse and damage, thins aneurysms, and the formation of aneurysms in the brain itself actually is advanced in these situations, okay? Drugs. Drug manufacturers often claim that because a new drug belongs to the same class as a proven old drug that it's safe. Uh, but, new drug, uh, but a new drug may have side effects that may not be found for, for years later. Dr. Alan Rubin, the author of High Blood Pressure for Dummies, makes a key point that he often doesn't put anybody on those new medications even within the same class for five to seven years, up to five to seven years, just to make sure there's no other side effects that would be overlooked. He doesn't want, as long as the old ones work, why would we add something else? Um, diuretics. Um, there's medications that have potassium sparing diuretics. Now ask for those. Drugs that act on the nervous system. If you're a hyper, hyper irritable person, if you're high stress, that might be the best medication for you. Explain to your doctor your mannerisms, who you are so they can make better choices. Vasodilators, calcium channel blocker, blocking agents. Okay, here's what's interesting. Or we could just send you to a third world country. We send you to a third world country. Somebody who doesn't have all the modern stuff and modern foods and packages and cans and, and uh, Starbucks and McDonald's and all those places. And all you do is you eat lean meats, rice, fruits, vegetables, and little or no salt. Guess what happens? Blood pressure goes away. Wouldn't that be a simple one? Just lean meats, rice, fruits, vegetables, uh, little to no salt. How much you spend it on blood pressure? How many other side effects have you had because of it? How many different costs have been associated with your high blood pressure? Just lean meats, rice, fruits, vegetables, and little to no salt. Guess what happens? Great likelihood your blood pressure will get better. Isn't that interesting? Look for hidden salts. Color developers. They promote development of color in meats, but have a lot of salt in them. Fermentation controller in cheeses, sauerkraut, and baked goods, increase salt. You won't see it because it'll be mentioned as fermenting controller. Okay? Binders to keep meat together while it cooks. They actually put all this stuff in there. You gotta remember that. That's why if you don't know your meat source, clearly, it doesn't matter if USDA actually stamps on it, they're putting the stuff in here, but they, they've allowed them to do those things. Okay? Uh, and texture aid allows dough to expand and not tear. How about pizza every Friday night, every Saturday night? We're putting a bunch of salt in, and by the time Monday comes, our blood pressure's through the roof. Here's the DASH diet. Dietary approach to stop hypertension, okay? Not too far away from our heart disease coverage, but a little bit different. Seven to eight servings of whole grains, four to five servings of vegetables, four to five servings of fruits, two to three servings of low-fat and non-fat products, Two or more, uh, two or fewer meats, okay, animal, animal meats, because we keep the uh, saturated fats down, like meats, poultry, beef, fish. Two and two and a half uh, servings of uh, real margarine, real margarine, because most of them are not, something that says phytosterols on it, and real butter. Four to five servings of nuts, seeds, legumes, no salt, or very, very little salt. That's the DASH diet to help control your own high blood pressure, empowering you to maybe not have to do all these other things, okay? So will you choose to control your future or will you be controlled by the disease that you suffer from now or in the future by not taking these action steps? It's all up to you. High blood pressure, something you can control? The answer is yes. Something you can do something about today? Yes. You've heard it here. This is Dr. Benzinger on Health with secondopinion.org with high blood pressure. We'll look for you soon, and may God bless you.